Lesson 13 for June 22 to 28, Turning Hearts in the End Time, and read by Dr. Percy Harold. Sunday, June 23, The Prophecy of Turned Hearts. Question. Compare the prediction of the coming of Elijah with the New Testament references to this event. Malachi 4, verses 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. And Matthew eleven fourteen and 15. And if you will... And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And Matthew 17, verse 10. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And Mark six fifteen. Others said, It is Elijah. And others said, It is the prophet, or like one of the prophets. And Luke 1 and verse 17. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. In the days of Malachi, God's appeal to the nation, Return to me and I'll return to you, met with the arrogant response, In what way shall we return? In Malachi 3.7. The frustrated prophet announced that one further opportunity for revival would be given. Recalling the heart-rending reform begun by Elijah in 1 Kings 18.37, Malachi predicted his coming again to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, as we've just read. 1 Kings 18 and verse 37 reads... Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. A Jewish tradition developed that Elijah would appear personally as the herald of the Messiah. We read about this in Matthew 17.10 and his disciples asked him, saying, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And Mark 6 verse 15, Others said, It is Elijah, and others said, It is the prophet, or like one of the prophets. However, the New Testament presents John the Baptist as a fulfilment of the prophecy, as we read in Matthew 11:14 and 15. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And in Luke 1, 17, he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Question, what do you think the phrase, turn the hearts, means? Several applications are possible for this phrase. It refers to the reconciliation of the people of Israel with the Lord. God as Father, in Isaiah 63.16, Doubtless you are our Father, though Abraham was ignorant of us and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer from everlasting is your name has turned from his wrath toward his children. Micah 7, 18 and 19. Who is a God like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage? He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in mercy. He will again have compassion on us, and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. And calls them to return to him. In Isaiah 44, verse 22, I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. And in Malachi 3, verse 7, Yet from the days of your fathers you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, In what way shall we return? It refers to the reconnecting of later generations with their faithful ancestors through covenant renewal. The prophetic call for God's people to follow the faith of the patriarchs was given repeatedly in the Old Testament. 
Whether the land continued as a blessed dwelling place was directly related to covenant faithfulness, as we read in Deuteronomy 4, verses 29 to 31. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him, if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul, when you are in distress and all things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn to the the Lord your God, and obey his voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which he swore to them. It refers to the restoration and renewal of family relationships. Parent-child relationships are a practical expression of covenant faithfulness with God. Here, too, fulfilment of responsibilities to parents and children are interwoven with continued inheritance of the land and God's blessing, as we read in Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 21. For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless will remain in it. So to finish the day, what is the connection between a restored relationship with God and restored relationships in our families. Why must one precede the other? You have been listening to a reading of the Adult Sabbath School Bible Study Guide by Dr. Percy Harold from Queensland, Australia. This service is brought to you by Hope Channel, the Sabbath School Department, and Christian Services for the Blind. Remember, God is always faithful.